oozing and dripping, seeping with wax. Today's creature is a golem unlike any you've ever seen before. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Monster of the Week. My name is Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, and today we're going to be talking about a creature that's one part original creation, one part kind of drawn from just popular culture, and one part kind of stolen from the Penumbra Monster Bestiary. I'm of course talking about the Candle Wax Golem. This creature is kind of different from regular golems in that many golems that exist in the Monster Manual, for 5th edition at least, they are given a spark of life, and that spark of life is a spirit that's drawn from the elemental plane of Earth. However, I was curious what that might look like if we, say, created a golem drawing a spiritual form from the elemental plane of fire. How might it be different from a creature of elemental Earth whose body was created on the material plane by wizards or whoever, and how might it be kind of similar in some ways as well? So what I came up with was a being that was nearly 12 feet tall, made completely of wax, completely molten and shifting on the inside while the outer shell of this creature has hardened enough to allow it to do simple tasks like pick up books and hold stacks of parchment, for example. They do have some very familiar golem-like traits, but there's also a few surprises in there for those of you who are exceptionally familiar with the monster manual. So today we're going to talk about combat, what this creature does, how it fights, and of course some ways that we can actually use this in our own 5th edition D&D games. And as always, the stat block for this creature is available in the description below of this video, so if you want to follow along with what I'm talking about or take a look at the actual creature itself while we go over how to use it, you can find it all right there. First things first though, it's time to put that candle making class you took in university to use because it's time for... So like many golems, this creature has tons of magical immunities. It has resistance to magic, meaning it gets advantage on the saves against any type of magical effect. It can't be polymorphed into a different form. And of course, it has tons of resistances to actual damage. The other thing it shares with many other golems, and by many other I mean pretty much every other golem, is it has two big powerful slam attacks. Definitely not something you want to get hit by if you can avoid it, because they do cause a fair amount of damage, but ultimately they are just that damage. But as I'm sure you're aware, many golems also have some type of extra ability they can do on top of just their regular slam attacks. For example, the iron golem can breathe swathes of poison. This creature, being that its spirit is from the plane of fire, can of course cast fireball on a recharge. Something that falls into the category of an attack that can be absolutely devastating if your players aren't prepared for it, which I think is a good design concept, at least when it comes to creatures like this. I feel like I don't really have to explain too much about what Fireball is or why it's good. One trait I gave this creature that I really like is called Malleable Body, which is basically just meant to represent mechanically how this creature is cool, hardened wax, but on the inside is made up of this molten wax that's continuously shifting and kind of moving around at the creature's whim. So the way this works is whenever a melee attack strikes the Candle Wax Golem, the creature who made that melee attack has to make a DC 15 athletics check. And if they fail, what happens is their sword or axe or whatever weapon they're using gets lodged inside the wax golem's body and pulled out of their hands and remains stuck inside the golem. I think this is a really neat ability for several reasons. One, it just adds a nice touch of flavor that will really make this creature seem a lot more alive and real, which is always good when you can convey that through mechanics. Two, it will give your strength-based characters a chance to kind of shine. Like, you might have some fighters that could have a bit of difficulty with this, but then the Barbarian comes in and swings and is raging and of course has advantage on those athletics check and is just smashing this thing to bits. But the other thing I really like about this ability is it changes the way a melee character might approach combat, which is a pretty rare thing to happen, because a lot of the melee classes kind of get in this idea where you have your combos, you know what works, and you just generally stick to your flow chart. But for example, say you're a dex-based fighter, like a dex-based ranger or a rogue, something like that, you might opt to switch to more of a ranged option if you have access to something that's ranged. Because in melee, when you're going to be attacking this creature with your rapier or short swords or whatever, if you can't make that athletics check to pull it back out, because dexterity characters don't often have very high strength, it's going to be kind of more detrimental to you than it would to, again, a barbarian or a paladin or something. This also couples really well with the golem's magical defenses, because if the casters are having difficulty using their magic on it, and up front the melee classes are running into trouble with getting their weapons stuck in it, it will force your players to kind of come up with some creative solutions. The last trait I applied to this creature I called Melting Point, which is, as you may or may not be aware, 
kind of the golem's berserk mode. Many golems have this feature where they get to a certain hit point threshold, specifically the clay golem off the top of my head, where they kind of start to go berserk or something happens, something changes about the fight. So I adjusted the candle wax golem that when it gets to below 40 hit points, its fiery spirit kind of starts leaking out and melting the wax and like its body is just melting down basically. When this happens, any creature that starts its turn nearby the Candlelax Golem is going to be taking a d6 fire damage at the beginning of their turn, which isn't super detrimental, but it is damage and it will add up over time. But more importantly, this is mostly a flavor ability that, again, can convey flavor through mechanics, which I'm always a big fan of. And speaking of flavor and how we actually want to use this creature, let's talk about some... So my whole idea that I had in mind when I was kind of building this creature, both literally and figuratively, was that they would kind of be a bit more on the arcane side of the golem spectrum, which I realize all golems are arcane creations, but I mean in terms of what their purpose actually is. I very much imagine this golem specifically maybe being a little bit more intelligent than the others, and acting almost as a servitor or direct assistant to many wizards or creatures that are just studying magic in general. So if you have a powerful wizard in your setting or you're planning on having some kind of group that is very magic focused, wax golems could be a very interesting enemy or just NPC encounter creature, whatever, to kind of build up that group and make them seem a little bit more fleshed out. And if you do have a group like this, another thing that's kind of neat is if you have access to Cobalt Press's Tome of Beasts, there's a creature in there called the Living Wick, which is like a CR one quarter kind of small little wax creature that has a wick on it. If you light it, it'll obey your commands and kind of act as like a little minion. And another thing about those creatures is you can detonate them and blow them up. They're really interesting. So I think that we really need to have kind of a collection of wizards that have these wax golems, but also these living wicks kind of running around that are like smaller versions of the big ones that can't really do quite as much. Could be really interesting. Another common trope for golems is that they're often found amongst cult members, specifically cults that worship elementals because of the nature of how golems are made. So you could very well have the candle wax golem be kind of a tool being used by a cult that worships a powerful fire elemental. Golems fill a very strange niche because they're kind of tough to throw in weird situations because they have such a specific lore about them, like they're created for a specific purpose and to do that purpose and they never falter from that purpose. So it's kind of tough to just put them in some random location if you just want to use a certain type of golem. But it also means that when we want to use a golem, we have a lot to go on, right? So if you did want to just drop this creature in a dungeon, you would want to put it in a dungeon where perhaps there was once a wizard living there, like an ancient wizard tower, and this is just one of their old constructs left behind after they passed on or went to another plane or moved away or did whatever it is high-level wizards do. And in that kind of situation, a wax golem could very well be an aggressor and just kind of be a minion to be fought in the dungeon, but they could also act as kind of an interesting NPC to sort of interact with. Because again, golems can't speak, but you could kind of play fast and loose with those rules and maybe if you're not allowed to speak, allow it to kind of have some kind of consciousness or maybe it wasn't meant to be a defender. It was more, again, kind of like an assistant. So when the party arrives, it greets them and kind of does like a formal bow and ushers them into the dungeon, kind of not really realizing how many years it's been there and it might be kind of crazed at that point. Something we're thinking about though, it'd be kind of fun to play around with that. The other big thing that we need to talk about when it comes to golems is that inevitably the party, well, not necessarily, but they might choose to try and create one of these creatures. There are items in the Dungeon Master's Guide that are golem manuals, literally books, where if you use that book combined with a certain amount of money and time, you can create a golem. So, if your players wanted to do that, I mean, in an ancient wizard's dungeon like this is where they would probably be most likely to find a manual to do such a thing. So you'd kind of have to decide on your own how much you think that would cost, but based on the other golems, you could come up with a really easy estimate just by averaging it out there. And I think that would be really fascinating because players are always up for challenges when it comes to creating stuff and getting better magical gear, in this case, a literal servitor. Something else I've included with this stat block too is actually a new item. And this is something I want to get more into because I think that one of the things 5th edition and just D&D in general is lacking is kind of a object description for what you could potentially harvest from an enemy. Now I get for certain enemies like say hobgoblins or thieves or whatever, there's not really going to be much you can do there. 
But in a case like this, I thought it'd be really neat if maybe some of the wax after a candle wax golem is destroyed still has that arcane energy imbued within it. So if you have a keen party member who's able to pass a DC 15 arcana check, they're able to harvest 1d4 kind of globs of arcane wax from this thing after it's destroyed. And what they can do with that is they can craft each one of those into an item called a walking candlestick which is literally a small candlestick that has a move speed of like 10 feet. And it's not a creature per se, but it has like one hit point and an AC of 10. Essentially what this is would be like an autonomous torch that you could light and set on the ground and it would follow extremely rudimentary and basic commands like follow, go forward, that kind of thing. So thinking about this from a design perspective, there's a lot that players could do with it. They could use it to free up an extra hand if they're adventuring through a dungeon and they need a source of light. It could be used for just kind of fun, flavorful RP moments as well. And also just knowing players and the shenanigans that they always get up to, I'm sure any group of players would be able to find some kind of use for this thing, which would be really fascinating. So that's an optional kind of thing that's in there. So if you like the idea of giving your players a kind of an autonomous candle wax torch that they could potentially make, there are rules for that in the stat block. But again, that's totally optional. And if you don't really want to give your players another random magic item, then you definitely don't have to. But that's definitely something I want to hear your guys' feedback on because I'm going to start trying to add more items like this and how with the Aurum Vorax, I kind of added the Aurum Hide Cloak thing. Um, I don't know. I just think that's a really interesting thing that would be cool to have more of in D&D. In any case, I think that this creature takes a really different spin on golems, which is why I like them a lot. And at the end of the day, it will provide a unique experience, which is what I am all about. So if you've ever encountered a creature similar to this, or if your DM maybe has run Penumbra for you and you've encountered almost this exact creature before, definitely leave a comment about that. Or if you just have plans to use it on your players, I'd love to hear them. If you like what I do here and you want to support the channel, I always tell everyone who asks me, what can I do? Just tell your friends, tell them to come check it out. And of course, if you are one of my lovely patrons, you can find the Candle Wax Golem kind of monster manual style stat block on the Patreon page. Also, before we end things off here, I do want to do a little bit of housekeeping. I apologize that the uploads have not been basically existent at all for the past three weeks. There's a ton of crazy stuff going on with me. New job, new house. I'm clearly in a different location. You can probably hear my voices echoing a little bit because there's literally nothing on the walls in this room right now. Um, so I'm still in the process of getting all that set up. But uh, yeah, things have been a little bit chaotic. I do apologize that I haven't been able to upload as much as I usually would like to. But that said, going forward, I'm hopefully going to be having a bunch of extra time to be able to bring you guys ideally two videos a week. But just bear with me. I appreciate your guys' support so much. And as always, I just want to say thank you very, very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then.